I had had an MGB, it was my first car that I bought when I was 14 with my life savings and I started restoring it and did a lot of the components and stuff but the metal and body was so terrible on the one that I got, like I bought it for $500 <laughs> and uh, I never finished it, I never got past the metal and paint so that I could start reassembling things. So that was like a childhood dream that kind of faded away when I reached adulthood and I sold it and I moved to British Columbia and years went past. And and then when I had the money, I thought, you know, I'm gonna... I started looking at costs for Heelys, and they were way out of my range, but I found this thing online, and it was all original, unrestored, early Mark I car, which is what I really like, and same colors as the one that I had as a kid. And, uh, and this thing looked immaculate. It had 40,000 original miles on it, all the original interior, which you never see, original paint, and... Uh, you know, I was on the phone with the guy for about a month before I actually got it here and I was all set I was going to fly out there and drive it home, but it was getting winter time and he was all, no, this car will do it, you can make it, you know. But I didn't, I didn't want to take the big risk of driving across the country because it was way in Michigan, so I hired a company and they brought it over for me and when it got here it was a good running car and like I say, very original and not tampered with but it had some rust issues that if I want to get my collector's plates I'm gonna to have to deal with it and it's you know gonna require a full paint job and all that to attend to these things so it ended up becoming a full nut bolt restoration and uh, which I took great pride and joy in doing you know taking it all apart and seeing all these original parts and, and detailing how everything was put together and the orientation of you know wiring harness clips and all the little details and I blogged about it and I got tons of press and interested other owners who were asking me detailed questions and do you have photos of this and do you have photos of that and, you know it was a really I don't know archaeological process restoring this car and uh, and rewarding in the end because it is so original it's got 90% of its original parts the only things I've replaced was you know rubbers and seals and things that, de that deteriorate um, and you know, interior-wise, it's got all of its original interior. Um, the I, the only interior things I did was I replaced the leather and piping on the seats because that was pretty far gone. But I maintained all the original vinyl, like unpicked the vinyl backs and re-sewed them with the new leather. And I found a new old stock tunnel carpet, which was like the only piece of carpet that was kind of starting to fray on this. I found a new old stock one in England, brought that in. It's got all its original rubber floor mats, which you can't get those either. Um, just re-dyed some of that stuff and reinstalled it. Um, and of course, the body. I was working at time at the time working with Coachworks a lot and doing a lot of upholstery jobs for them, and so I was able to get them in to do the metal and paint, which is they are the best of the best when it comes to body work. Um, so this car is perfectly straight and just beautiful. It's got all the welds where it should. You know, they redid the uh, factory stone guard on the undersides and in the inner wheel arches and then overpainted that with the body color as original. Um, so it's just been done, you know, exactly as original, very accurate and just shines. My name is Jeff Chrysler. My company's name is Rightway Heritage Trimming. I specialize in British and European classic auto upholstery, and I drive a 1964 MGB.
know, for a vintage car, I was expecting it to be really sluggish and heavy in the turns, and it's not. It's it's. She wants to go. She runs really smoothly, and like cornering and turn. It's like she hugs the road. She's she loves it. It's 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 a joy to drive. It's it's. I've gone on several you know trips around the island, and it loves these island roads, and it's it's a very happy running car. My father was kind of the Austin Healy aficionado in North America, so I was raised around that. He was one of the founding members of the National Concourse Committee for the Healy's and very, very exacting, de detail-oriented. And growing up, there was always a huge need for really exacting upholstery. There was like one guy in Ontario who did it and he charged like <laughs> through the roof. and. Uh, but it was the best and, and there wasn't much competition for that standard, you know, and certainly that one guy wasn't going to be able to handle all of the work that my dad was doing constantly and all of the other humans being restored. So I moved out to Vancouver, BC when I was 20 and wanted to move to the West Coast and lived there for a few years and had various trades jobs at the time. I was into carpentry and I'm an artist and... Um, one year I went on vacation and came back and needed to find a new job and my this company had just started in North Vancouver called Heritage Upholstery and Trim. Um, they are also BAS JAG Upholstery which you might know of and they, they branched out and started doing more than just JAGs and getting into Heelys and MGs and that. So my dad quickly became their big customer helping them out with patterns and trying to get their Healy stuff together and said, you know, you need a job, you should go apply to those guys. They know who I am and just say, you know, you know the cars better than they do because they don't seem to know what they're <laughs> up against yet, you know. So I went in and applied and yeah, I started just doing shipping and receiving for the first couple months and then worked my way through and yeah, I was able to say, you know, those seats should be like this here and actually that piping should go like that and, you know, quickly they saw my interest and my knowledge in this stuff and uh, and I started an apprenticeship and they started me just doing panels and then I within a year I was doing seats and within two years I was production manager lead trimmer and I stayed there for 10 years and uh, producing upholstery kits for all British sports cars Jags and Heelys and I was doing you know I'd do three or four e-types a week <laughs> and four or five Heelys a week, you know, and it was just constant and I got really good at those cars and how they should be and uh, and then, yeah, five years ago when my father passed away, I moved back to Ontario and left that job and decided to go into business for myself, doing the same thing and um, I wanted a simpler life so I moved to the island, didn't know anybody here, I came by myself and uh, Within a week of arriving, uh, and I figured, you know, I have an upholstery business. I don't know what the market's like there. I'll do whatever I have to. I'll do boat upholstery. I'll do, you know, there's got to be lots of boats on the island. I'll get into that. And I arrived here, and within a week, I got a phone call from Ruby Konacek saying, I'm looking at your website right now. We need to talk. We need to meet. Why don't you come on by? And I did, and that first meeting, he gave me like three cars. He's like, you can start with this Porsche, move on with this E-Type, and this AC Asica, and he just started handing me, feeding me stuff, and I worked for him primarily for like four years. He was like my number one customer. I did other stuff here and there, but he just kept feeding me all these beautiful, rare exotic cars, that uh, many of which I had never done, but uh, you know, the learning process was huge and it's made me that much better of a trimmer and I have so much more passion for it now having worked for him with his people so yeah so my next project the only reason I could ever possibly have to sell my MGB uh, because I worked really hard on that I love it it's a joy to drive but I grew up with Austin Healey 100s that was my dad's specialty and they are my favorite car. I have a huge spot in my heart for Healy 100s. Um, they just always seemed out of my price range, like, you know. And I found this thing. Uh, it's a early 54, January 54 
car, which again, the earlier the BN1, the more I know about it. I, I really know the early cars. Dad got to restore like the earliest three discovered BN1s. Um, so I was raised around these, all this early stuff and I found this car and it was in LA at a dealership, but you know, I could sell the B and be able to afford getting this entry level. And this thing is so solid and original. Like it's really not been messed around with too much. It's got a lot of original trim all over the place. Here's the original Kiwi blue throughout. And, uh, you know, other than some it has about the same metal requirements that the B had. It's just the lower rear rocker areas as, as they, they go. Um, but everything else seems really solid. So I've got some really solid bones here to build up my dream car. I feel like I am one of the fortunate people on this planet to be doing exactly what they love doing. This is a hobby, a passion for me. I love coming in here every day and sitting down, you know, putting on the radio, CTC or whatever, and getting into a project and, you know, focusing in on the details and the archaeology of taking things apart, seeing exactly how they were made and recreating them as accurately as I can. Um, that whole process, whether it's in upholstery or just restoration of any kind, is something that I love doing and I'm super passionate about it. And yeah, it's, I love what I do. It is a hobby.